Welcome to episode number 57 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media. And I am so happy to be sharing the screen today with our lone position player, the captain of the Miami Marlins, Miguel Rojas, who, did I just see you, was that an, an espresso? You were just yeah, that's an espresso. You know, you know, you know, I, I need my coffee in the mornings, man. And these hotel rooms are doing so much better, putting an espresso machine in uh in the room so it's I, i'm barely leaving my room before going to the ballpark it's been a game changer but it's yeah. good to see you chris and excited to to talk to you again we haven't chatted in a while huh? i know it has been a while see it, and i apologize um you know i've been doing this show battle bots in vegas for the last week and a half and so the schedule's been all over the place i have very few off days and our shoot days are like 13 hours so it just doesn't it doesn't coincide with with our co-hosts availability all the time in fact you'll laugh at this lucas giolito texted me the other day and he goes did i get kicked off the rotation <laughs> that's the that's the kind of feeling we get man sometimes you know like we're playing we're playing our season and we're playing baseball and i can i can't even imagine about the the life of a starting pitcher when you're getting you know you're getting into your routines and stuff but you have like such a uh long time off you know like okay you work out you're getting ready for your next start but i mean this is part of our routines now you know we need to be on the on the rotation and we need to de- do this uh at least a couple times a, a month no i'm with you i'm with you we're trying to finish strong i i wrap up battle bots on on saturday i go home sunday so actually i'll be home by the time this is released and then we'll be back on our our regular train which i'm looking forward to i love doing battle bots but it's really fucked up my baseball life a little bit. I got to get up with you, buddy. So. Yeah, but it's, it, I mean, it's, I, I bet it's a really good time over there in Vegas, oh. man. You're you're in the best. I mean, in my favorite place right now. So I'm I'm start start thinking about going to Vegas. But uh, I mean, it's a such a long flight with the family and the, and the yeah. kids and stuff. But I'm gonna have to do it this whole season. I'm gonna go there. Do you have a favorite hotel out here? Uh, yeah, the area one. The area yeah. one is my favorite, but uh, I mean, I like to stay in different uh, yes. different hotels every time I go, you know, because uh, that's one of the, the, you know, the fun part about going to Vegas. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to be partying and, and doing all that stuff. I like gambling. I like I like playing poker. So that's why I'm, I'm going mm. there. Yeah. So uh, that's my uh, that's my favorite thing to do um, in my in my free time, in my in my me time. So Miggy is a poker player. So well, that's what here. I, yeah. Do you know that I was, I used to be a poker commentator. Oh, really? Yeah. So when I worked at Fox Sports, um, I was doing the best damn sports show, period. And my boss at the time, George Greenberg, we started really getting into the, into the poker game as a network. And he okay. said, I want you to start calling poker. I said, George, I've never played a hand of poker in my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah. he said, don't worry, I think you'll be good at it. So do you know the name Howard Letterer? Yeah. Yeah, course. world famous poker player. Big time. Yeah, Howard was my analyst. And he would sit with me literally for hours and go over everything. He I every said, hand, okay. every every little like play and and I mean, the bluff, it, the setup. It was the equivalent, but he had to start from scratch because I didn't know a damn thing about it. Uh-huh. It was the equivalent of us sitting down with somebody and saying, "Okay, when a hitter gets in the box, if you get four balls, no way. To walk that to from from that from from the beginning, huh? I knew nothing, oh. nothing. And That's awesome, man. I, I would like, man, I would like some connections with you because uh, this is what I want to pursue after my baseball career. You want to, you want to be a pro poker player? I want to be a pro poker player. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I'm. That's why. That's why I'm trying branding myself. Like I. I need to get like a sponsor. Uh, I, I know it's not going to be as easy, you know, like I need to prove myself. Like same thing with base, uh, w- what I did in baseball, you know, I need to prove myself. I need to, I need to uh, let them know that I can play a little bit, you know, play my, uh, a couple, couple tournaments on my own. But then I'm looking forward to, uh, to get my sponsorship and trying to get in the league, man, as soon as possible. So do you just kill it on the planes against guys? Well, I'm not always kill it, but I have my, you know, my game, you know, like they always, they always worrying about me because, uh, you know, I, I go and play and then when I play against them, they always think I'm bluffing and, you know, like, cause I play my game. So who's, but, uh, who's money do you take? Come on, give it up. Uh, so I used to take, uh, Marcelo Suna's money. That's, uh, 
that's the that's the one that I that I used to take. But we didn't play poker at that time. We play another games. You know, mm-hmm. we play dealer choice because not everybody is a is a poker player on the plane. Right. So we play from bull ray to three five seven to AC Ducey. Then we play a hand of poker, uh, takes a hold. Then we play pineapple poker. So uh, there's a lot of games that we play in this in these flights, especially when the where, where we go to this to the West Coast. Uh, long flights, we play a lot of cars. Well, I remember there was a story a bunch of years ago that Ortiz, and I forget who he lost to, but it was some guy who had almost like no service time in the show. And I think he had to like rename his boat after him or something. And he lost, <laughs> he lost a decent amount of coin. Like what's wow. the most, what's the most you've seen one on a team flight? Uh, so I used to be with the Dodgers, right? So uh, that game was kind of expensive. Uh, so it was Dan Heron, uh, Henley Ramirez, Hinge Rue, Jaciel Puig, and oh. all of those guys there. So this game right there is like no limit, like no limit. Whatever you have in your, like, you know, like you always have whatever you, your stack is, is what you play, right? So you couldn't go just all in. You can reach to your pocket whenever you want. So if you have a big hand, that's why I couldn't play in that game because I didn't have $10,000 at the time to spend. So if I don't have the nuts, I couldn't be in the hand because even when I thought I got I got a winning hand, let's say I got a full house and there's nothing else that can beat me other than like maybe another, like a, a bigger full house. I couldn't be in the hand because uh, all of a sudden down here and say, okay, 10,000. And I don't have that, you know, I'm out to spend. So. Uh, yeah, I, I'm seeing a lot of like big wings, like over over ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in a flight. Oh, oh, Maggie. Yep. Er, but now you're balling. Well, I mean, it's a different it's a different ball game now. You know, like we're not we're not we're not in a team that we have a lot of veterans. Our <laughs> our buy-ins right now are like one and two hundred dollars. You know, and uh, we're just having fun. Oh, that is awesome, man. That is so good. Now you're in New York City, and I'm catching you on a day. Did you guys get a, rained out already? Yeah, this is this is a weird, uh, weird series. So yesterday, you know, we play a game that it was uh, suspended right. from April 11. So we got a lot of things going yesterday. Uh, we play a game with a different, a totally different lineup. We have two rookies that yesterday got the opportunity to get their first big league hit. And first big league home run, uh, Brian De La Cruz, a guy who made his mm-hmm. debut uh, a little over a month ago, he just got his first big league hit yesterday because uh, uh, this game is supposed to be April 11. So I don't know how this is going to change all the all the structure of his uh, uh, service time. Uh, maybe uh, he's going to get more morning arbitration because he got his hit early in the year and not. No, wait, hold on a second. He's gotten plenty of hits since he came over in that trade. Oh yeah, but but the hit counts as though it happened on April 11th. Exactly. So first hit, it was a first hit, first RBI for him, and then the guy already have a month killing the lead. You know, he's hitting like 360, but he got his first hit yesterday, literally. Oh, that is hilarious. That's yep. so funny. So your game has been canceled today. Yep. I know we've talked about this <clears throat> before. New York is not your favorite city. It's not. So what are you going to do all day? Yeah, I just I just think I'm going to be here in my room and uh, staring at the window, seeing the, the rain coming down, and then wait until I'm hungry so I can order some sushi maybe, something like that. I'm craving, I'm craving sushi or, or, or maybe a New York pizza. Uh, I got I to gotta decide what I'm going to do with, uh, with my time later. But, uh, I mean... There's nothing that really excites me about going out here and 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 go get stuff, especially in a rainy day. And I'm not gonna be walking for shoes or anything like that. Right? No, no, no. You know what? I'll I'll give you this option. My oldest son Josh is there right now. Okay. He's um he's there on business, so he's just okay. yeah he's just hanging out in the city and you know he could bring you his, your pizza or sushi. You know he's got some, oh that would be great. Yeah, he's got some DoorDash experience. You know. <laughs> He can run and get you your food. Here you go, Mr. Rojas. Just give him a good tip. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. So uh, that way I can take a picture with him and send it send it to oh. you or something. <laughs> oh God. You know that you know that would make my day. It really yeah, would. I it know. would make my I don't even know if we have have we seen each other in in real life? 
in person not yet so i'm i'm, I'm excited to uh maybe this off season we we yeah. we said you're something gonna be else. disappointed i gotta be honest with you you're gonna look at me and you're gonna be like god you're this really frumpy guy you're just ah it's okay i mean there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with uh with uh a good first impression you know and oh. if it's a bad first impression may, same same with you like if you might you might see me in person and you say hey this guy's no mm -mm. it's not it <laughs> no no i know we're gonna be fine no my wife doesn't like to pay, play favorites but she 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 goes that Mickey rojas he's so adorable he texts you his homework <laughs> all the time and this one which we'll get to later won her over beyond belief she cannot stop talking about it so i can't wait to to fill everybody in on that a little I'm, bit i'm glad i'm glad that you put me on on that uh on that assignment because i Good really one. enjoy it and i spent some quality time with my son he was yes. waking me up just so you guys know he was waking me up at 7 a.m in the morning so he's he's going to school now mm -hmm. um so he's he started school at 8 30 so he's waking up at 7 7 30 you know to get everything done before he goes to school he's waking me up in game days at 7 a.m in the morning so we can do a little bit of Lego. So it's going to be a good one. I hope I hope everybody enjoy. Hey, everybody. we got some breaking news in the digital collectibles world. That's right. Topps recently announced the upcoming release of their 2021 Topps MLB Inception NFT collection. It's inspired by the popular Topps Inception baseball physical product. So these striking, officially licensed top MLB NFTs They're available on September 9th at 1 o'clock Eastern, exclusively on topsnfts.com. The collectible celebrates baseball's promising young stars, from breakout rookies to veteran mainstays, and also introduces the New Beginnings, which is a set that celebrates both the new and familiar faces in new places. When the sale goes live, that's on September 9th, collectors will have the ability to purchase five card standard packs and 25 card premium packs by credit card with nft card rarities ranging from common to legendary so the collection will include the iconic tops card designs motion animations facsimile signatures digital relic content and more in bold artistic styles so once again that is september 9th at one o'clock eastern the inception nft collection That's Thursday, September 9th, 1 o'clock Eastern, only on TopsNFTs.com. Don't miss it. It's going to be great. What a great story. I love that. Uh, speaking of playing the role of daddy, you have a really young team, man. Mm -hmm. And it got younger after the deadline. Um, and it's been a struggle for the last six weeks. It just hasn't been pretty. We know that. Uh, do you have to go up to guys individually or have a team meeting and let everybody know Hey, guys, I get it. We might be a little under, man, but this is the show. This might be the only opportunity you have to show exactly what you got. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like you, like you put it. A couple team meetings that we all talk together, a couple of just hitters meeting, a couple of just pitching meetings. Um, and we talk about the stage of this, this group, where we are, and where we want to go. That's, that's the most important thing, you know? Uh, maybe right now we're not in the place that we want to be, you know, for this year. And we have to, we have to understand that, that, that things are, have to get better at some point, you know, and who we're going to count on from now on, from, from this moment that you can receiving an opportunity to play for actually like putting yourself in the map, because right now we're not playing for, Uh, going into the playoff or winning a championship this year or anything like that, for me, the most important part about young players receiving this opportunity is showing what you can do for a team who wants to win, you know? And that's why it's, it's hard sometimes because these guys, are, like right now, they're just in, in survivor mode. So that's what I call a survivor mode is trying to prove yourself that you can hit, that you can pitch, that you can feel in the big league so you don't get sent down. So when you got that mentality, it's really hard to play team baseball. For me, I always attack them and say, hey, we have to make sure that we have we play team baseball and instead of thinking about production. Let me let me produce myself so I can stay in the big leagues and I can prove then that I can hit. I can prove that I that I can feel we have to continue to play team baseball because that's the way that you're going to stay here. So as a leader, as a as a team older guy. As a veteran player, all I want to do in these moments is 
tell them that is like your numbers right now, they they can care less about if you hit 400 or you've hit 100. All you have to do right now is show that you can play for a winning team and show that, that you can do it for like when, when it matters. So these games against uh, guys who are in the hunt, like the Mets are trying to make it, the Phillies are going to try to make it, Tampa Bay is, is, is in the lead right now. So you're going to face all those teams. Show me what you can do to beat those teams who are in the hunt right now so you can be here for next year and, you know, the future. Very good perspective. So you're in the midst of this series against the Mets, and, man, you just went into a shitstorm. Holy smokes. Your boys Baez and Lindor, along with Pilar and a couple other Mets, doing the whole thumbs-down thing. Then, you know, two days later, they have to apologize after the team president rips them. The ownership wasn't happy. Did you talk to Javi Baez or Frankie Lindor about what's going on? Uh, they they need to take care of that on house, you know? Like, I mean, other other players from other teams or whatever have to respect whatever is happening on that organization. And you can really get into it, something that uh, that they need to clean up in-house, you know? I mean, there's a lot of controversy, you know, playing in New York is, is not a, it's not an easy place to play, you know? And sometimes players will um, actually be frustrated more for not just things that happen on the field, but whatever is happening outside the field, you know? Like the rumors in media, social media, uh, fans, uh, other people coming into your city and boo you because you're playing for a big time team, you know? Like that's stuff that we don't live in Miami. Like you have to understand, players who play here in New York are under so much pressure than other teams that playing in places that we don't have that kind of pressure. So you have to understand that players are human beings too who are going to be frustrated and they're going to show emotions some way that, that sometimes it's not going to be good. If a fan do that, nobody cares because it's a fan, you know? They can boo, they can, they can cheer, they can say something, they can say bad words. And, I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be under the rug at the end of the day because they're paying a ticket to do that. But when a player show their emotions somehow, it's going to be a big deal, especially uh -huh. if, if you're here. If you break your bat, if you throw your helmet, if you're if you're saying something, if you're doing something, it's gonna be always in the news because you're the player and you're the one who always had the spotlight on. So for me, I mean, sometimes players reflect their emotions uh, different ways, and sometimes it's not the, the the proper way for for others. But at, at the end of the day, man, we live in the world that uh, I mean. Some, some people will agree with you, some people not. Right. But the, the best thing about it is that Javi Baez yesterday, he didn't play the first game. When he came out in the second game, that guy received a, a, an ovation and fans are going to be there for him. And we see Lindor uh, not having the gear that he, that he wants to get. But let me tell you something. Pay attention to how Francisco Lindor is making his outs. He's always a good at bat. He's never like... First pitch swing with ground ball to second base. This guy is barreling the ball. This guy is hitting the ball where, like, a lot of balls over 100 miles per hour. And I know fans don't care about that. They care about, they want to hit. They want to They want to run. They want, they want this guy to be, exactly. They want results. But sometimes results in baseball is not just getting a hit. I know. I, you know? You know, I want to give you my take real quick on this. Yeah, go ahead. I thought it was wrong. But I thought the part that was wrong was Javi admitting what this was all about. If he had lied when asked the question and said, not lied, but just said, hey, this is just a little team thing we're doing. It's just like, to, you know, we haven't been playing great. So, you know, we'll just do it. Yeah. His mistake was being honest because 80% of what Javier Baez said about, hey, man, it sucks when you get booed. It hurts. It's not fun. All of that, I agree with. Like, we tend to forget as fans that you have families. You have wives who are sitting in the crowd. You have kids that have to hear some asshole in the crowd say, you're a motherfucker. Fuck you. Why didn't you get that? That hurts. And just because you pay 30 bucks for a ticket does not entitle you 
to treat another human being like shit. We care more about what the fucking shortstop and second baseman on the Mets are doing than these people who are making decisions in Washington, D.C. How fucked up is that? That's terrible, but it's because we are so passionate. Like, I've been a lifelong Mets fan, and I get it because I did the same shit when I was a young person in Cleveland, and I'm embarrassed by some of the stuff I did. So we all just got to check ourselves, and I've always thought when my team's struggling, isn't it imperative on me to help pull you out of the hole that you're in, Miggy? It's, it's on you. And, and sometimes we, as a player, we rely on fans and, and the guys who are on our side. We already have so many guys on the other side that they, wanna, they, they want, not, not, not that they want the best for us in a bad way, they don't want us to succeed against their team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So when I come to New York, let's say this is this is what I'm seeing that Baez and Lindor and, and these guys are saying from, from their clubhouse and their dugout. Your intention of booing should be against the other team, right? Because you're on our side. You know what I mean? So when, when I come to play in New York, I need to be worrying about oh, these fans are going to get on us, you know, for us to get worse. Mm-hmm. Because that, that booing and that, that pressure should be applying on the, in, on the other team instead of my own team. You know what I mean? Okay. So yesterday it was funny because Jesus Aguilar make a play at first base and he was making fun. You know, he played he play a, a lot of games uh, against Lin, uh, with Lindor, with Cleveland. They were teammates. They know, they know each other really well. And he was... He was just making fun of Lindor and the guys in the dugout. You know, every time you get a ground ball, you can hear that the other guys in the dugout saying Brr, or 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 miss it or whatever or something like that. And like you hear that, and then you make fun with uh you you play with the other team. Right. So you see Aggie there, and actually the fans are starting booing Aggie or or saying something to Aggie, that's what they should be doing, you know? Right. Putting pressure on Aggie so he can boot that ground ball for the home team to score runs, you know? By the way, that was hilarious. When yeah. he, Jesus Aguilar is a riot. He is so funny. He's he's like Miguel Cabrera light, in my opinion. He has so much fun at first base. For him to look into, into Lindor's eyes in the dugout and being like, hey, the fans weren't booing me, they're booing you. They're bo-. <laughs> I mean, it was hilarious. Yeah, that was a that was a moment where I told Aggie when I when he got back to the dugout, he said, "You're helping the Mets right now. <laughs> you're helping the other team because you're you're shifting their uh, their focus on their own team. You're shifting on you, so that's on you. And that's what he was saying to uh, to Lindor that it's on you that they're booing me. You know, <laughs> that was that was that was a fun moment, man. It was hilarious. I know you're listening to a baseball podcast, but football is around the corner and DraftKings is giving out free money. You bet $1 on an NFL game during the first week of the season, you receive $200 in free bets instantly. No matter what, you take those $200 worth of free bets and you put them right back into baseball. You bet the Twins to hit the under. You bet the Braves to win the division. You do whatever you want with it. Football gets you the money. You use it on baseball. Boom, bing, bomb, bam, bang. No one has ever said those B words in that order before, I don't think. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any week one game. That's promo code ROSE to get your free $200 in free bets instantly for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or PA only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in Indiana. 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Thank you very much for listening to the Rose Rotation. We appreciate each and every one of you. Back to the show. Have you ever been booed by the hometown, whether it was in L.A. or Miami? No, in Venezuela, in, in my oh. home country. That's why, that's why I, uh, I, I know what these guys are feeling. And uh, so being booed is, is, is not a fun thing. 
But at the end of the day, uh, I think Jeter said it the best. So if I'm getting boo, it's because I need to get better, you know? And I, I think he, he said it uh, shortly in his speech, in his virtual speech in, uh, uh, before when he, got, when he got elected to the Hall of Fame. He said he appreciate all the, the, the Yankees fans that putting on his pad and booing every single day. So that never make him feel comfortable about going into a game and not giving the hundred percent, you know, and not getting things done. So getting boo in my home in my home country, and when I'm playing winter ball, things that I shouldn't be like. I mean, I wanted to go play winter ball, but I don't want to go there to get boo. You know what I mean? Mm. After I'm a big leaguer, I'm, I've been in the league for seven, eight years, and I'm going back to Venezuela, and I I ground out into a double play and I get boo. You know what I mean? And because I play in a big city in Caracas, the team having win the championship in 32 years, and I get boo, you know? And that's that's my experience of getting boo. And, and actually, my home country it hurts. It hurts a lot. Did you, did you like, want to cry? Not cry. It's just like, like I feel, I feel like upset mm. that, uh, you know, that I'm, I, I, I couldn't get things done for them to be happy instead of, instead of, you know, thinking that uh, that what I'm doing there. Yeah. Well, I just, and I just want to put a period on this. I'm good with fans booing. But in my opinion, I only boo when I feel like there's a lack of effort or lack of concentration, because I think those are things that you can control. I will never, ever boo an athlete because the performance isn't up to standard. It's just, I don't think it's fair because there is failure associated with every sport and particularly this one that we love. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can be frustrated. You can be upset, but man, I don't think people understand how much power they can have when we can have the power of positivity and help when you guys are struggling and you know that we're behind you. It's okay. As long as you're giving it everything you got. So that's just my final thought on that. I got a final thought and it's uh it has to be a, a balance too because uh sometimes when you're struggling and you're not you you know yourself that you're not doing good and you need to get better mm -hmm. you don't want people to tell you hey it's okay you're gonna be all right because we are we are grown ass men you know and mm -hmm. we know that okay. we don't want that kind of you know we don't want a, that kind of support that is like kind of fake you know what i mean if you're not doing good you shouldn't be like share on and, and hey, it's okay. You're going to, you're just going to make it whatever. I mean, you're trying hard. I mean, it's okay, not but so, trying hard. Uh, it's not enough. No, I understand that. But then how do we find that balance? Have we found, have we solved the booing issue at all right now over the last 10 minutes? I mean, I don't think that we have, maybe there's not an answer to it. I, mean, not, I, I don't think it's an answer. You just have to, as a player, you just have to accept it. Accept it. And, and, and you decide to play in New York and you knew it. You decide to play in Philadelphia. You knew it. You decide to play in, in places that, you know, they're hard. And they're being hard forever. Mm. So if you play, if you decide to come to New York and play in New York, you have to understand that you're going to, you're going to receive that kind of okay. criticism. It's going to be different. You know, if you don't want to get criticized that bad for, for fans, go to place the, you know, St. Louis or I don't know. Other places, that, you know, okay. It's, Maybe I got to rethink my position on this. I appreciate the insight. That's that. Hey, this is why think we do this. It. Fans, fans, uh, fans out there, think about it. Good. Uh, your buddy Miguel Cabrera finally hit number five hundred. Did you text him? I'm happy for him. I didn't. I didn't text him. I uh, I dedicating a post, uh, mm -hmm. like a story post on 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 social media, because I know I know how hard it is for for Miggy to uh, pay attention to his phone. I. I got to I got to <laughs> think about like how many people because Miggy is one of the, the like the most humble um approachable guys I'm pretty sure like million people have his phone number and I'm pretty sure he he was receiving a lot of text messages and calls and all that got so it. I don't like I know I know how it feels so I just want to um uh, giving a Give little tribute face. yeah exactly when whenever I I going to have it, the the opportunity in the off season I going to talk to him and I going to I'm gonna give him like something, uh, probably a, I don't know, maybe a, a bottle of, of of alcohol or something like that. Hey, um, on his name. Just imagine you how know? much he's gonna charge you now to watch him hit BP. Exactly. 
Now he's a 500 club. We know he's going to be a Hall of Famer, but imagine when he gets to 3,000 hits. Hey, that Freddie Galvis, if you're, if you're listening to this, <laughs> we know we're going to have to pay a lot of money to, to watching him in this all season, man. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. And kudos to the Blue Jays fans. Gave him a standing ovation as though he had just hit number 500 in a Blue Jays uniform. I think that was – that's cool stuff, man. That was how many, really how many home runs, Chris? How many home runs do you think Miguel Cabrera had, will have right now if he, if he plays in a, in a, in a hitter ball pop play? Oh, you mean outside of Comerica? Um, outside of Comerica or Miami when he started his career. Yeah, yeah, because the ball didn't – even in that old place, you're right, it didn't travel. Yeah, so if he had played um, like on the south side of Chicago, right, or in Cincinnati, yeah. right, one of those places, Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee, yeah. And and any any of those places at home, you know, because Comerica, and remember, Comerica, I I think Comerica Park bring his fences in two times already. Yeah. Since Miggy been there. Yep. You know, and yeah. and this guy has five hundred homers. I mean, he's a. I, I think he's the best. Best hitter that uh uh from from Venezuela ever for sure, but he's got to be like top ten in in the history of baseball for sure. Oh yeah, man, he just because he had a stretch from when he came up in 03 until probably I would say probably to about fifteen or sixteen. So you're talking mm-hmm. about a twelve or thirteen year stretch where he was the guy in baseball you didn't want to face. You know, Pujols had it for him from 01 through his entire tenure in St. Louis. And then he got to Anaheim and something, I don't know what went wrong, um, which is still an amazing, it was, you know, maybe the best 10 or 11 year stretch to start a career we've ever seen with pre right. uh, Cabrera had a little bit more longevity in terms of his dominance and uh, go look up his stats. So the year he won the triple crown, he obviously was the MVP. The next year he actually put up better numbers in, in some categories. Yeah, he just got beat. I think he just got beat by uh, Chris Davis in homers. Yeah, but uh, he's, he's still lead the lead in average and uh, in RBIs. Just, I think he's just that's guy. amazing, man. Amazing. Hey guys, we take care of you with great baseball content here on the Rose Rotation, but I want you to take care of yourself, courtesy of our friends over at Manscaped.com. That's right. We know all about the lawnmower 4.0. That's right. It's new and improved state-of-the-art technology so you don't get the nipping and the tugging and all that other stuff that's happened with you in the past. That does not happen now. In addition to that, you got the ear and nose hair trimmer, which I need. At my age, this stuff grows like, I don't know, as much as I change t-shirts. So it's basically on a daily basis where I just got to clean that stuff up there and there. It's also got the Crop Reviver Ball Deodorant. So you're going to take care of yourself down south of the equator. In addition, how often have I talked about the Manscaped draws? Michelle loves them, by the way. And you also get the Shed Travel Bag. It all comes in the group. We're here to take care of you. You take care of yourself. That special someone in your life is going to love you. And here's the easy way you do it. It is manscaped.com. The code word is ROSE. You get 20% off and free shipping. But you got to use the code word ROSE at manscaped.com. Let's go. I'll take care of you with the audio. You take care of yourself with Manscaped. All right, let's uh, get through a few of these quick things. Uh, So you have played Cincinnati, San Diego, Philly, and the Mets all recently. Uh, These are teams all dancing around that last wild card. We know the first one's either going to be the Dodgers or San Francisco, whoever doesn't win the NL West. Which of those teams is the best, in your opinion? I just play, we just played Cincinnati for seven games. And it was really tough to beat them. Not just because they had a great offense, but their pitching staff is is complete. You know, they got guys uh, who can start the game. We're gonna give you a quality start. Mm-hmm. They have Wade Miley doing great things for them. Uh, we just faced uh, Mali. Uh, yeah. That that guy having a, a really good year, and uh, he's 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 your number five. Yeah. Or or this uh, or the Cuban guy is 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 in the, the number four, number five. Gutierrez. Gutierrez. And he's is having a three six ERA a uh, year too, you know, and the front the front guys uh, Castillo and Sonny Gray, you know, you know what you're gonna get from them, you know. I I really think the Reds are in a really good position to to take that spot. Okay. 
Okay, and not, let me ask you nothing, this. Yeah. Is their bullpen good enough? Their bullpen now. is good. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think they got they got guys who can match up okay. with with the other teams. Uh that's that's that was my next team. Uh the starting pitcher is good, but the bullpen, they match up really well, you know? When they're winning the game, they have their combinations. They they can go to Lorenzen, they can go to Sims, they can go to uh to uh, uh Givens. And they have a lot of guys who have experience in the league so they can pitch in leverage situations. So that's why for me, other than the, the offense that they got, you know, with Castellanos, Naquin, Baro, really, really tough lineup to pitch, you know. They're they've been doing a great job. And uh I think I think they're gonna they're gonna survive because and, and the other thing why I say that is because the Padres gonna have to face San Francisco and the Dodgers a bunch. And uh, so the central is a little bit easier to navigate than other divisions, you know, because in September you always play your rivals more than outside of your division. So mm-hmm. I, I pick Cincinnati over over the other guys. Okay, good. Uh, I think Cincinnati would be a fun one-game playoff against somebody. I think they would scare the shit out of either the Dodgers or the Giants. You know, you t- Castillo – like the first six weeks of the year, you're like, what the hell happened to this guy? But then since then, he's just been money. And you can go with Sonny Gray and feel good. And you could go with Wade Miley, who's got playoff experience. And Okay. Let me ask you Let me ask you this question now. Uh-huh. Who would you give that ball? If you're the manager of the Cincinnati Reds. I give it you're to David Bell. Castillo. Yeah, if, if everybody's on rest. But the thing is, Miggy, that's why you need depth. If you're that second wild card team and it comes down to the last few days, you can't sit here and say, well, we'll save Castillo for Tuesday of the wild card. Uh-uh. You need to win that Saturday mm-hmm. before. So he's not, he might be available out of the pen or something on a Tuesday, yeah. but you can't. So that's the beauty of this is that I love to see this many teams in that race because it forces managers to make really tough decisions. May I play 162 games for one game. Wild card spot is this. Have to change. You, you we need to, to make this it become a three game series. Yeah, three game series like we did last year. You know. Yeah. Uh, I think I think that was that was one of the things that you can that you can actually implement for yeah. spend the playoff or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be like uh, more teams. I mean, I don't know how it's gonna end up being, but uh, I think that those two those two teams that make the playoff, it's really hard to make the playoff in the big leagues. But, you know, like you have to win either win your division or be one of the best. So for me, you have to you have to give them the chance to 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 play a three game series. Well, see, here's what I would say also, and I know a lot of it is predicated on TV and and things of that nature when we come to the playoff time. Uh, but from a pure baseball standpoint, I would make it a three game series. It would start the day after the regular season ends. So that right, regular season ends on a Sunday. I don't care where we have to go. If if uh, the Reds are are the road team and they have to go to LA to play the Dodgers and the Reds finish the regular season in Pittsburgh or wherever. They need to be ready to suck go. it up, brother. You guys are the wild mm-hmm. card team. You're the second wild card team. We're not going to roll out the red carpet and give you an off day to travel and all that sort of stuff. Uh-uh. Get on a plane and let's go. You play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the home of the first wild card team. And well, then it's... you start your divisional round Thursday against the number one seed. So you win Wednesday in after a three game series, there's no rest. Doesn't matter. You are the wild card team because I Chris, don't remember th- we're not machines, right? And hey. we just play 162 games. Hey brother. Just- <laughs> hey, listen, you're the second wild card team. I know. I know. But Maybe. I mean, I'm they, doing des- this. they deserve, they deserve some, a, a little bit of rest. I, I, I understand I it, but listen, here's what I want to do. I don't want to penalize the number one seed by giving rest to the wild card teams. If we're going to make it so important that you mm-hmm. win the division and you become the number one seed, why is it fair for them to have to sit out of baseball Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then play a game on Friday? That's ho- You know that. That's hard to do. Yeah. Okay. So move it up one day. Let's roll, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got a point there, and I, I can, I can even go against that. 
because I know uh, you're I, tired. I get it. Yeah, I understand. And but, I don't. I mean, if you have to, if you, if you want to make it, you, you you have to do it. You know, that's that's what you uh, that's what you have to do. You have to do it. Yeah, and that's it. That's a good one. I got so I got some take, great rules for this game, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna take notes, man. I gotta take you notes. Know, no, we could. You're gonna you're it. gonna help. <laughs> I'll text you. We can go back and forth with great rules for the game. It'll be good. Exactly. All right. Uh, Scherzer has been unbelievable since getting traded from Washington to LA. He just is. He's ridiculous. He's 37. He's just a demon. He's got two different color eyes. I don't know how you focus <laughs> on that when you're in the batter's box. So you have faced a bunch of very very good pitchers in your career. I'm picking four: Scherzer, Kershaw, Strasburg, Degrom. Is it is is it fair to say that I have to play in the same division with three of them and I, face him like five or six times a year? Do you know? I'm, I'm just I'm just saying. Do you know how saying. good your numbers are against a couple of those guys? By the way, yeah, I think I'm thinking I'm pretty good against uh, all of those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, your the, OPS is like 760, which against a Hall of Famer is freaking awesome. Yeah. Kershaw, it's 1400. Yeah, I hit Kershaw well. I I feel like I'm I'm seeing the ball better against lefties and righties for sure. Uh, but I got a couple a couple of good games against him. I'm not gonna call a victory yet. We got a couple more years of you know of battles, so it's good. I need good to. Start. Yeah, I need to stay. I need to stay humble here. You Strasburg, know? Strasburg, you're over a thousand OPS. Mm-hmm. I'm not Degrom. Degrom is all singles. I I hit good against him, but <laughs> all singles. So I haven't, I haven't get a, a, a extra base seat against him yet. So okay. So which of those four is the toughest to face, and why? So for me, number one, the toughest to face is Degrom, uh, and the reason why is is, is such a he doesn't give you anything to hit. You know the square that they put in the on mm-hmm. the on the screen. You know, he's he's not hitting the heart of that square a lot. He's hitting either the corner, outside, or off. Right. So he throw a hundred ninety nine to one hundred and one or one hundred and two mile per hour fastball that he throws away that looks like always look like a strike and stay there. And then from that point he throw his slider off that, which is a 94, 93. He can mix it up from 89 to 94 mile per hour slider that breaks this much off that pitch that you just that you just take, right? And then all of a sudden you just swing it at that pitch and it's a ball. Because you can't really, you can't really tell which one is a fastball and which one is a slider. Because it's so hard and he rip it so hard every single time that he pitch. And he got so like some his tension is so good, make you feel like the ball is on top of you, and you have to make a decision so quick. That's why it makes it so hard to hit him. Because he, I got a couple of things on the ground. He will never try to make, get you out in, you know. He will throw one ball into you as a righty, but he's not trying to get you out there. He's trying to get you out, out there, and you know that. And even when you know he's going to go away, it's really hard to hit him because he never lifts off, like, in the middle of the play. That's why I put the ground number one. I got to go with Church, uh, with, with Kercher number two. Because Kershaw is being dominated for so long, so many years, you know, so many innings pitch, and his breaking ball is being getting better every single time. So what, let like, me stop you there. Why do you think you see him so well? I I see lefties well overall, and I hit lefties better in the righties in my mm-hmm. career. So for me, it's like I know what I'm gonna get from from Kershaw, and I can can give you more details about that because a pitcher's probably going to be watching this and Got I don't it. want them to know, you know, Fair enough. what I'm looking. But lefties have something for me that it, it plays into my into my game. So Fair enough. for me, I think Kershaw better because everything following to my plan, you know. But when the ball and, and this guy starting going away from me, from my, from my plan is when it got trouble, you know. So... That's why that's why the Grom is one, Gershaw is two because his stuff is really good, and he was good for us such a long time, and I got the privilege to be his his teammate on his MVP year, right? And I saw that from a different perspective, from a shortstop, and every time I play behind him, I say, man, 
how like how hard is to hit this guy right now you know so that's why i have to put him number two then churcher will be number three and stras will, will be number four with all the respect to these guys is it's, it's well, been it's been a battle every single time that that i have to face them. yeah well you know here's the thing about lists if people were to hear this they're like man put scherzer to look at the other guys we're talking about you know we're not talking about the guys at the bottom of the rotation you know of some slapdick team out there like these yeah. are these are guys that you're going to make hall of fame arguments for we know kershaw's going in we know scherzer's going in DeGrom, I worry about the injuries, but he's got Hall of Fame stuff. And you could make the same argument for Strasburg. I mean, it's like, I don't think any of those guys would be pissed. Like, really? You're going to put me behind that guy? Come on. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's that way. I mean, you yeah. say, you say giving, like in the prime, you know, these guys are maybe the only one that he's not in his prime is Kircher because he's been pitching for so long, so many innings. Right. But he's still, he's still dominating. He still got a three ERA in the best division in baseball. Yep. All of that things you have to count on, you know? And the, the thing about DeGrom is like in his prime, he's been so dominant over everybody that is it's hard to it's hard to argue. If you tell me career-wise, yeah, Kershaw is number one. Right. Scherzer is number two. And uh like I'm just talking really, about facing these guys. That's all yeah, I, I'm facing just these guys. So did you ever face you face Verlander? I faced Verlander in spring training. Yeah, no, uh, not not in the regular. I think once one time in the regular uh, season. I think a couple at bats. So yeah, you don't so, have enough of a, a database to know. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, I can't really go. I can't really go and tell you. You know, you know who transformed himself in, into a really, really good pitcher, Gary Cole. I yeah. faced him when he used to be with the with the Pirates. Different guy, you know, more of a sinker, uh, sinker, curveball guy, kind of thing. And then I faced him in spring training when he got to the Astros. Wow. Amazing. His well, fastball you know, people explodes. are going to start laughing at that, Miggy, though. Well, I mean, you know why? I mean, yeah, but I mean, he, he's been dominant, man. You know, it doesn't matter, man. Everybody, everybody else was doing it, too. I mean, don't so you don't you don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck, man, to be honest with you. <laughs> I love it. I love. Dirty you know Miggy. why? Yeah. I mean, I don't like. Yeah, I care that now it's a little bit is it's fair for everybody, you know, for the right. leaders. And I feel like we're really competing. Uh -huh. You know, you giving me your best stuff and I giving you my best swings. But gotcha. at the end of the day, man, everybody was doing it, you know? Okay. Um, I got one other fun question for you. Did you see my boss here, one of my bosses here at the John Boy Media? Did you see Jimmy? He and Jake <laughs> oh and Kloof all went up to uh, Milwaukee and they got a chance to run in the sausage race. And uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what happened? Because I haven't, I, haven't seen the, I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay, I'm, I'm watching right now. Yeah. So for those of you that are audio only, we're watching the sausage race from a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, Jimmy was doing just fine. Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, there he is. He blew out. I think I think he fell on purpose. You do? Yeah. He just went. It, I mean, I don't I don't I don't see anything. I don't see anything that make him really fall. Well, you think it happens? You need you think what whatever happens to the guy, you know he was racing the freeze. In 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 Atlanta. Atlanta, did you see that video? Yeah, his, I think that guy fell on purpose. No, 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 no. That guy, I I I can tell you what happened there because uh, I I done that before. When you when you're so tired, you start like losing your legs. You know, you're not feeling your legs anymore, and then you just collapse. It's probably what happened to him there. Yeah, Jimmy really ate it. Uh, he did a great breakdown on it where he felt like he he got arms tangled. I think that's Jake in there. Yeah, it's got to be because that's the shortest <laughs> sausage I've ever seen. Shortest, yeah, that's Jake for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man. So, yeah, that's Jimmy some... was dude. Jimmy had to tap out of of doing talking yanks, I think, because his hamstring was so screwed up. It was rough. So so he got a so he got an injury from that. Oh yeah, I think he's like, I think he's still struggling with it as oh, we speak. My God. Hey, I'm 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 sorry. I'm sorry, boss. We don't want to. <laughs> We don't want to. We don't want to talk dirty about you, but I mean, that's. I think we can. That's tough. I think we're allowed to poke the bear a little bit. For, a little I mean, bit, of course. There's got to be like a whole year statute of limitations where you can make fun of him for it, right? I mean, at, at least a stretch, a stretch out or something like that before you do that. You know? Oh, that guy loses legs right there. Yeah, we're showing you the have guy to, who you have to stretch it out. You have to. 
you have to like at least be warm for the, for that race if you want to do that. Yeah, you know, right now we're showing for audio only. We're showing the guy who had you know a twenty yard lead on the freeze with just a little bit to go, and he ate shit about five feet from oh, the finish yeah, line. Man. He he lost his legs there. Hey, when, start feeling numb. When he starts feeling numb, he has to stop. Uh, when there's like little fun things like that going on in a game, are you guys paying attention to the to that stuff? Yeah, sometimes sometimes we do. You know, it's it depends of what stage of the game you are. You know, like if you just if you if you just hit and you know made an hour or something like that, and you're like really thinking about like what what the pitch was or whatever, you're not really into it. But there's other times where like I mean you're relaxed and you're not thinking about anything and you enjoy the the kind of things that and and that's one of the things that the players don't do uh, a lot. Or like us players, we focus in the game of baseball so much in the three hours and a half, four hours that we play a game for that we forget about our, our environment. Anything can be happening on the field, you know, fireworks, this thing, that, uh, uh, celebrities in the, in the on deck circle or whatever. And sometimes I don't even know because I'm just focused on the game and what this guy is going to do to me and stuff like that, that like you don't really appreciate what's happening around you. Do you ever play the, uh, you know, they do this at every ballpark, the hidden ball trick under the hat and then they, on the scoreboard, you know? Exactly. Every ever, time I, I, I try, I try to play that and <laughs> I never pay attention. That's, <laughs> that's what it sucks. All right. Let's get to your homework assignment, which I loved. It was, uh, we were talking about how I, I found a, a love I have with my youngest son, Brady. We build Legos together. And I know that your son is now old enough to, hang with it so let, let's see how how this whole thing went this is great well chris as you see right here we're working on this project it's uh, a little over a thousand pieces uh lego this is one of the things that i'd like to do with aaron and amber is uh is doing her part too to help us but uh this is going to take a little while but we're going to show you the results after we finish So this is a thousand p. Is that a pirate ship? It's uh yeah. It's you know um this is from Mario Brothers. So this is Bowser, Bowser uh chip. So oh. uh it, it was it was amazing because uh it's a big like a big boat. So a lot of things inside and and the good thing about that is the Lego have the Mar the Mario and the Luigi that you can actually play with and like jump on stuff and it tells you what are you doing like you're collecting collecting coins or you're just you're killing a goomba you're killing a, a another little thing you know so you can see it over there it's a it's a whole boat you know that, by the way how old is your son he's five right he's five yeah to sit through a thousand piece lego that ain't easy i'm impressed with him yeah, it took uh, it took like a little bit over a week to finish. You know, I uh, I started with him. We did a uh, like three quarters of the of the chip together, and then I went on the road. And when I came back, I it was almost ready. So uh, I'm I'm really happy and proud of him. He's uh, he's he's been growing so fast on me, man. I know. By the way, he has got show hair. Oh yeah. He, he's got the thickest head of hair I've seen on a five-year-old, man. Yeah, he, he likes it. He, he likes it long too. So yeah, sometimes why not? sometimes I don't I don't I don't like it because he, he covers his eyes. Oh. He can't really see, especially when he's playing tennis or baseball. Well, you so gotta see what my my soon-to-be sixteen-year-old's got. He's he's got the Kenny Powers mullet working and everything. Oh he's my god, it. that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, he's letting it. He's letting it eat. He's letting it eat. All right, man. So we got a, uh, we probably have one more of these during the regular season. And then you want to join us for the playoffs? Yeah, for sure. I'm not going to be, do, be doing anything. So uh, I actually, if you guys, if you guys have uh, some uh, extra plane ticket, so, or I, I buy my own ticket. You know what? Like no. If you guys go somewhere, I'll, I'll go, I'll go with you guys for the playoff, start interviewing guys and stuff. So I think it's going to be fun. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. We, uh, yeah, we had a great first big time road trip for the all-star game in denver uh -huh. right here that was awesome we got amazing content 
And then the guys went to Milwaukee and they took their RV trip. They went to Chicago. They went to Pittsburgh. They went to Philly. So yeah, we're, we're making headway here, Miggy. Yeah, I like it. So uh, we should, we should do something uh, about the playoffs for sure. Oh, Come God, in. yeah. I'm in. No, I'm going to be tap, tapping your brain. I, I don't want to take you away from your family. You spend enough time away from your family during the season. Do you guys go travel anywhere during the uh, during the? Yeah, we're gonna we're we're planning a trip, so I think we're gonna go to uh, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. I think it's, it's well deserved. Like this season oh, has yeah, been so is. long, man. After after playing those sixty games last year, this has been fantastic for uh, for everybody and for the bodies, for the minds. You know, it's been over um, over a hundred something games now, so we got like thirty more to go. But at the end of the day, man, we're blessed that we're still doing this. And I'm happy that, that we overcome COVID. We still, we're still dealing with some things. But uh, at the end of the day, man, we're happy that the sport came back to full force. And I'll tell you, I love it because Brady, I talk about him a lot, our youngest son. Mm -hmm. He stops what he's doing when you are hitting. And I told you this, I'm not allowed to watch because I was on a streak and you wouldn't get a hit. And I was like, I can't watch. So he's... Yeah. He's the good luck charm. So he's he's watching all your ABs. So tell Brady to st to to keep watching and just stay away from the TV because I think you've been watching lately because I've uh, been struggling a little bit. So stay away hey, from got, the TV, Chris. You got to know you got to know your role. I will keep exactly. as far away from that as far. There's Brady right there. Look at those, <laughs> look at those flowing locks, man. Oh, look at that, man. And yeah, that's just, a great that's a great flow. Yeah, it is a great flow, and he loves it on when he's wearing it on the baseball field because that's when he feels. That's when he feels big league. So yeah, with the hat on. That's good. Yeah. All right. Hide it from you. Hide it from you, man. Yeah. We're <laughs> growing up. Hang out to those little kids, man. They won't be sitting on your lap much longer. It sucks. I know. Tell I know. me about it. I cry about it all the time because I'm such it's a crazy. <laughs> uh, it was great catching up with you as always. You have tremendous insight on the sport. Uh, I love the breadth of the knowledge you give everybody and it just rolls through the comments, whether it's on our YouTube channel or elsewhere that uh, how much people have gotten from you and you are different because you are our loan position player. And so you can take us to places that other people can't. So I always greatly appreciate it. Different perspectives. That's what, that's what we're trying to do. Right. And get that's it from man. inside of the game while, while you're in it. That's uh, it my man. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna never be the same. I was talking to Donnie uh, about how the game is evolving and how much of an acceptance you have to have when you get out of the game. As soon as you get out of the game, people will will stop like thinking about you. You know, yep. like you have to you have to be like a big superstar and rock star in the game for them to remind you forever. But uh, at the end of the day, man, you have to you have to give all the knowledge that you have while you're inside the game and trying to share it with people. You're the best, my man. You really are. You're a good, good human being. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and thanks, everybody, for tuning in today. This is the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.